Welcome back to Hometown TCG, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Josh. And I am John. And we are here in our very short and limited series about our, your Monarch pre-release and the heroes you're going to play. And we're talking about Prism today. All right, Prism. I'm excited about this one. I think a lot of people are. I think a lot of people are. I, I know I am excited about this hero. All right, so let's, uh, let's just get into her. Um, what does she do well? So we know that Prism has a lot of massive attacks for a relatively low cost. I mean, we're seeing sixes, sevens. I think we're even seeing nines out there. Mm -hmm. She's got a lot of massive attacks for low cost. Uh, she's got a very strong weapon. It does require a little setup, but she's got a strong weapon. Yep. And she has instant interaction, which is almost always good because right, it's rare. Right, right. Yeah, a lot of things going well for her. Uh, some things she struggles with. Ooh, a couple. Uh, well, one, a lot of her stuff costs a lot. Yes. Um... You have a lot of two cost, three cost cards. Her instance, her power costs two. Power plus her expensive. weapon costs three. Oh. Uh, then you have the phantasm um, uh, mechanic. Mechanic, yes, right. Where if your opponent is like brute, for if instance, if your opponent is brute, if your opponent's brute, she you're not does do everything well. poorly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if your opponent has these six damage attacks, they can block your nine damage attack with one card, which feels horrible. Absolutely, and and she does require some planning. So her planning, if interrupted. It's if it's poorly timed and it's interrupted, her plan goes awry and it's very hard to get back on track with her. It feels like. I mean, we haven't played it yet, but that's what it feels like. Right. Um, so, so let's talk real quick. I mean, just getting right into it. What does an ideal turn look like with Prism? Okay, so you're going to want to do, uh, like, your weapon, which has go again, into yes. a big attack. So you'll need at least one spectral shield there, right? Right. Because the iris does, t it turns your spectral shields into temporary weapons. Yeah, so you may end your opponent's turn by creating one. Then yes. on your turn, you pitch a blue to do your weapon, follow it up with a big attack. Exactly. And it's important to note that the spectral shield uh, blocking that damage is not optional, correct? It's it's required. If you were to take a damage, does. the spectral shield would get destroyed. Right, right. Okay. So that's why it's fragile. Okay, so you're saying uh, spectral shield token as a weapon into a big attack is definitely her big turn. Are there any cards yeah, that come to mind Yeah, that's a big that? turn. Um, so obviously if you pull a Majestic, those are super powerful. <laughs> sure. Um, also, if you look at uh, Spears of Surreality or Phantasmify, those are one-cost things. So you can actually do your weapon into that card, into a two-cost card like Enigma Chimera. Yeah, the Enigma Chimera ending that that combo, I guess, right. would be Right, now great. that's a huge turn. That's a huge turn. It requires a full hand and a Spectral Shield, to shield token, but it's a big turn. It's worth maybe taking a little damage to get that off. Right. But if, if we're going to pull off this ideal turn, we're going to want to pull some very specific things. And like we talked about, those uh, Spears of Surreality... Uh, Phantasmify and uh, what Enigma Chimera, right? Mm -hmm. But Spears of Sur Surreality and Enigma Chima Chimera are all commons. Yes, so you probably will we'll pull them. We'll see some and variation even the blue of them. version of them does a lot of it does three, which is decent. It's a decent for a blue. attack, right? It's a decent attack for so blue. So you're getting good common value. Uh, obviously, if you pull Majestic, it's great, but what you really need as well are blues. Yes, so that's the last point we want to make is what do we need to pull to play Prism effectively? We need to pull a lot of pitch. Some of those packs, you know, you're just opening these sealed events. You're not seeing a lot of pitch. If you're not seeing a lot of pitch, you almost, it's guaranteed that you can't pull it yeah, off. Yeah, you need it for her weapon and for her attacks, especially if you're trying to do multiple things in a turn. you got to have multiple blues. Exactly. So you're not going to want to defend a lot either. You're going to try to race a lot of people with these big attacks. Right. So if she has, if you draw your packs and you're like, I'm playing her no matter what, do you think you can force your way into her? So the topic of can you force a, a, a champion, it almost feels like it goes hand in hand, is can, can this champion or can this hero be consistent? And it doesn't feel like you can force her unless there's a situation where the pack breakdown, because there hasn't been an illusionist yet, we're going to see a lot of illusionist cards, a lot of variety there, then is it really forced if you draw a lot of it, right? But it, it feels like if you don't draw the support like we talked about, the, the Spears, the Phantasmify, the Enigma Chimera is enough pitch, you, you can't get around that. There's no alternative strategy. I don't believe you can force her. What do you think? You think you can force her? I think... I I don't think you need a ton to make her work. Okay. You need a few specific things. You need at least a few of those big attacks sure. to make it happen. Sure. Um, if you have that and enough blues, you can do it. So I don't think it's hard, but you do need a couple specific things. Okay. So I think we stand on the... 
We stayed very on the fence here at Hometown TCG as to whether or not it's you could like, force her. But I think yeah. it's fair to say we're very excited to play maybe, oh, yeah. in one of our sealed events. The card art is just beautiful. Oh my goodness, if you pull any foils, even the common foils are going to look so great. Yeah. Uh, we're excited. This has been kind of uh, another part in our bit series about these heroes and your sealed events. We hope this helps you. We're excited. We can't wait for our sealed oh, yeah. events. Uh, hopefully you guys can't wait for yours. Until next time, I'm Josh. And I'm John. And we'll see you in the next one.